the, the previous hostel didn't have continental breakfast or anything like that, so I just hung out there until about noon. There were these uh, girls who were checking in, and they were um, talking about who had the heavier bag. Like one was saying she had like a 15 kilogram bag and stuff like that. I told them that my bag was like less than five kilograms, which is like four pounds, or no, um, it's like uh, 10 pounds. And then uh, so I showed them how I pack, and they were kind of <laughs> awestruck by that. So like I. I guess I kind of make regular backpackers seem like hoarders. I headed towards the current hostel. Once I started getting to the side streets, this city's more uh, visually interesting. Along the way, I stopped into this uh, little uh, print shop, so I got some uh, passport photos, which I need in order to get my, uh, among other things, I need to get my visa for uh, Vietnam. Um, and then on the building, it says it'd take 10 minutes, and then I got in there, and it was like 20 minutes. And then so I went to uh, try to find a cafe nearby to kill some time. And I go to cafes a lot, <laughs> not really for coffee or anything like that. It's just, it's like 95 degrees out and like 80% humidity, so it's like just any chance to get out of air conditioning. And I haven't found too many like malls or shopping centers here, so cafes have kind of been my go-to, or 7-Elevens. Um, and then uh, a lot of the cafes that were showing up in my GPS app weren't there so i ended up going into i think it was called a bone cafe it was weird it was kind of like a cafe slash like coffee maker showroom I didn't even have a menu up so i wasn't sure if i could actually just get coffee there um but it was good it was uh yeah, just some kind of frappuccino anything cold and i had it uh back to the print shop and like I said, it, was to, it was advertised as 10 minutes. It almost took probably like 40 minutes. And then I headed over to the hostel, but I still had a little bit of time. So I decided to walk over to the station, the train station, to uh, make sure I could guarantee that I have a train ticket going back into Bangkok on Friday. And uh, that's going to be interesting. Because first, when I told them when I wanted to go, they were kind of upselling me on this more expensive train, and I asked if I can get on the cheaper one, and they were telling me that there's no air conditioning, and I can't remember if the ones that I've had up until now have had air conditioning, but uh, yeah, so this is gonna be a 15-hour train ride. Originally, um, the uh, visa service that I looked into getting for, uh, or using for uh, Vietnam it was supposed to be like $20, and then you have a visa, and then you get into the airport, you're fine. And then I forgot that, uh, or I neglected to notice that in addition to that $20, once you get there, there's like $45 stamping fee. Um, and then I looked into it, and then, like, that's not an official visa source. So, uh, like, the government has this new thing where it's like a, for, I think it was like 35 bucks or something like that, or 25 25 Um, you apply online... And then you have uh, three days processing time, and then you go in, and then you don't have to pay any other fees. So the previous one, it was 19 with, like, two-day processing, so this one was three. So it was more expensive, but it was, or it was cheaper, but it was longer. Um, and I had a little bit of a drama as far as uh, getting the scans of my uh, passport and photo. Um, but the... Uh, the guy who runs the hostel helped. It's like I'm pretty much down to the wire. Like, I have to hope that they approve me by Friday night, essentially. And then I think there's places to print documents in the Bangkok airport. So I'm going to pretty much be going into the airport not knowing whether I can actually get into Vietnam. Um, but worst case scenario, there's a lot of countries around here that I can get into without a visa. So like worst case, I pay $60 and I go to Japan which isn't necessarily a bad thing for me. As I was uh, heading back, uh, there was this, I guess it was like a temple. It was weird, because like it, there was a lot more signs. It almost felt like it was kind of like a store. I really don't know what I was walking through. back to the hostel and it wasn't check-in time yet so I went to this uh, cafe a little bit down the road and I had uh, some it was like a rice noodles um, and 
uh, some watermelon juice smoothie. And I forgot how refreshing watermelon is on a hot day. And so, like, all told, I think, like, it looks so fancy, but, like, the both of those combined were, like, maybe $2 or something like that. And then I uh, checked in. turned out that uh, there's no one else staying at this hostel. Um, it's a very small hostel. I think there's like one dorm and then uh, one private room. So I have the dorm. I just realized it's weird that I don't have the private room to myself. I mean, like, what difference does it make? That's weird. I didn't think about that. Anyway, um, but uh, it's nice that I have the whole room to myself. Um, so I got to just kind of pick my bed. I don't even, I don't even actually have a key for the place is just like there's the one door in the back of the building that's unlocked if I wanted to go out I mean I'm not going to now but it's starting at 10 p.m. but I could uh, just walk through that door and then I had like a choice between the there's just like two bathrooms there's a men's and a woman's and the woman's has a bigger uh, shower so I was allowed to just take a shower in there the uh, downstairs area was like a bar restaurant thing so it was a little awkward like having like that degree of service like I'm the only person that they have to wait on, so it's, <laughs> I feel like, I don't know. But they're really nice. Can't have snacks or uh, drinks other than water in the room, even though I have to myself. Um, so I'm out in the, I was thinking I would do this in the patio area, and I didn't think about the fact that there's no light. <laughs> so I'm just like sitting in pitch blackness other than the light from my iPhone. As I was hanging out for dinner, I checked their menu and they had some decent st signing stuff for decent prices. So I, I wanted to see something else in the area so I wasn't spending the whole, the whole night here. Um, so I told them that I was going to go get like a snack somewhere and that I'd come back in like an hour and a half. And then so they, uh, I actually put my order in for food before I left. And then I couldn't really find any place with anything that sounded that appetizing. Um, but so I just went across the river. Oh, so uh, at night, um, so there's a bridge that goes across the river, obviously. At night, the, uh, the bridge kind of has these lights illuminating it and it cha constantly changes color, so that's kind of cool. Um, so the bar I went to was called like Bus Bar or something. It was like, it was kind of a bar made out of like a bus. Yeah. Like they were seating on top of the bus and I think there was like a DJ inside the bus and then I was sitting outside. Came back. The uh, rice dish that I got was kind of spicy, which is good. Um, although I really gotta stop doing this myself. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's everything. Um, until tomorrow. Uh, it's weird doing these now because, like, I'm, I'm realizing that, like, by the time I eventually get these up, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in a completely different country.